I'm always super excited to talk about various amateur discoveries in astronomy. Specifically discoveries that are done completely by accident and discoveries that were somehow missed by professional astronomers for one reason or another. And in this case, it's a discovery of an unusual new galaxy, a never before seen galaxy, that seems to be orbiting the iconic Andromeda at a distance of about 2.5 million light years away from us. But it's not this galaxy, that's obviously the Andromeda. It's a galaxy that you can sort of see right here. But where is it? Where is the actual galaxy? And that's essentially where I guess we start our story. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing the discovery of Pegasus 5. Or maybe it's Pegasus V. No, I think it's 5. A dwarf galaxy that's sort of visible in this picture right here, but becomes a little bit more obvious once you're shown where it's located. And this is a very unusual ultra-faint dwarf galaxy located somewhere at the edge of the Andromeda that was recently identified by one of the amateur astronomers by using the publicly available data from the National Science Foundation's NOAA lab, the National Optical Infrared Astronomy Research Laboratory, the publicly funded research center that's been getting so much better at both sharing its data and also at science communication. And in this case, discovered by the Italian amateur astronomer Giuseppe Donatello. I'm sorry, I totally mispronounced that. Anyway, the astronomer that's already discovered six other galaxies before, and who also has some really incredible astrophotography pictures available on the website you can find in the description. But very recently, while looking around at this public data that's available for pretty much everyone to peruse, he accidentally came upon this unusual smudge, as he called it. The smudge that sort of everyone missed. And this turned out to be this unusual hiding dwarf galaxy. The galaxy that we now refer to as Pegasus V, or Pegasus 5. In this case, this was part of so-called DESI Legacy Imaging Survey image. You can access this in the link in the description. And it includes this interactive map that you can use to explore pretty much everything out there. Although unless you have a lot of experience doing this, it would be very difficult to find something here that seems to be out of place. For the most part, pretty much all of these objects are already known to us. But obviously there are still some objects that are hiding in pretty much plain view. As a matter of fact, only a few years ago, we've talked about one of these objects right here in the Milky Way galaxy, or technically around the Milky Way galaxy. And specifically it was a very similar dwarf galaxy, or what's known as the Diffuse Dwarf Galaxy. And there are quite a lot of these that have been found around the Milky Way in the last few years. There are over 60 different dwarf galaxies in the orbit around the Milky Way, with one of the most recently discovered being Centaurus 1, but as you can see from this table, quite a few of them have been found in the last 5 years or so. And so obviously more of these will be found in the next few years as more and more telescopes become operational and as our technology improves as well. Similarly, quite a lot of satellites on the Andromeda are already known as well, but only some of them have been discovered relatively recently. As a matter of fact, the last major discovery from the Andromeda previously was approximately 10 years ago. And that's obviously because, first of all, it's much farther away, but also because, well, these galaxies are just generally very, very difficult to see. And there's a very good reason for this. They're known as diffuse galaxies because they don't contain a lot of bright stars. Any stars that are present here are just very, very dim, much dimmer than our own sun. And that's because many of these stars are just really, really, really old, way past their prime. Some of them are billions of years old, and many of them are what's known as red dwarfs. And many of the bright stars that used to exist here either went supernova a long, long time ago, or might have been captured by the Andromeda itself. But in this particular case, it wasn't really until the follow-up that it was officially determined that this is indeed a galaxy, and it's indeed a very dim galaxy. In this case, this was done by the 8-meter Gemini North Telescope that used some of its state-of-the-art technology to confirm the existence of this dwarf galaxy. But in the process, also determined that this galaxy seems to be extremely low in heavier elements compared to any other dwarf galaxy we found in the vicinity. And what this implies is that this is an extremely ancient galaxy, very likely a galaxy that existed even before the Andromeda and the Milky Way started to form into larger galaxies that they are today. In other words, this here seems to be some kind of a primordial, really ancient galaxy, potentially even a galaxy that existed very likely almost as long as some of the oldest stars in the universe. And we know this because this galaxy seems to mostly contain only hydrogen and helium and does not contain a lot of heavier elements such as carbon, nitrogen or oxygen. Making this a kind of a fossil galaxy, 
one of the first galaxies that very likely formed in the vicinity of the Andromeda and the Milky Way, and one of the galactic relics that very likely contains a lot of information about some of the earliest stars in the universe. It might even contain some of the oldest stars we'll ever discover, but this might be very difficult to find because of the distance and because of the low luminosity. But theoretically, so many more of these galaxies, these relatively hard to see galaxies, should be in orbit around both the Milky Way and the Andromeda even right now. The problem is that we don't seem to see them, and if they don't exist, it might actually create a bit of a problem for the modern cosmology. Specifically, the problems for the ideas behind the mysterious dark matter. But it's not a problem we're going to be solving anytime soon. But in this case, what's interesting is how all of this was discovered. First of all, it was discovered using public data. Second of all, it was discovered by an amateur astronomer. But third of all, it was discovered using a telescope and a survey that was never meant to discover any of this. So it was basically as accidental as it can get. But because of this discovery, by using the Gemini 8 meter mirror, they were then able to identify certain very, very old, somewhat faint stars, which then allowed the scientists to directly measure the distance to this galaxy and also determine its stellar population, which they discovered to be extremely old. So basically, there's still quite a lot of stars out here, millions and billions of different stars, but everything here is super ancient. As a matter of fact, this is probably what most of the galaxies are going to look like billions of years in the future when they no longer have any gas or can produce bright stars. And although it's kind of hard to tell it from this picture, the analysis in this case did determine that there is a huge concentration of really old stars in here. But unlike a lot of other galaxies we've discovered in the last few decades, this one seems to have seized its star activity and star formation an extremely long time ago. We're talking about billions and billions of years ago very likely even before the existence of the solar system and planet Earth. But in this case, the scientists believe that this is maybe the fossil of some of the first galaxies that existed in our area. In other words, it's maybe some kind of a leftover from some of the galactic collision that used to happen here in the beginning of the universe. And so in that sense, it might actually help us understand how Andromeda and the Milky Way formed, but also help us get closer to solving the mystery of the mysterious dark matter. As a matter of fact, it's believed that this particular galaxy was formed during the period known as the reionization period, something we've talked about on the channel previously, and something that the scientists are trying to learn more about because it's a period the scientists want to learn more about as it involves the creation of early stars. And at the same time, this might also help us solve the mystery of the satellite galaxies of the Andromeda itself. As the scientists started to discover more and more satellites of the Andromeda, and specifically some of the dimmer ones, they discovered that many of them seem to have a very unusual orientation orbiting in a kind of a polar plane in relation to the Andromeda itself. And this is kind of unexpected, because mathematically we think that they should be randomly distributed. But they're not. They do have this unusual polar distribution, and at the moment it doesn't really make sense. Now, one potential explanation here does involve the distribution of dark matter and the so-called cosmic web, but currently there is no agreed-upon explanation. So basically, it's a big mystery. But with discoveries of new galaxies, the scientists might finally be able to explain this. And Pegasus V might be that needed clue to try to explain what's happening here. But naturally, this is just one of many, many mysteries of the Andromeda galaxy, and some of them we've explored before on the channel, and you can find some of these videos in the description or somewhere right there. And actually, one of the most recent mysteries that was officially solved comes directly from the center of the Andromeda. You can find this video somewhere in the description as well. But I'm sure more mysteries will be solved once the scientists get to analyze Pegasus V and once they're able to discover some additional information and additional details about this unusual and somewhat accidental and barely visible dwarf galaxy. But until the scientists discover something else, that's pretty much it. Subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful personal t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.